Good afternoon, everyone. I will call this meeting of Stratford City Council to order. Uh, joining me in the council chamber is the city clerk, Tatiana Defoe, and Joan Thompson, our chief administrative officer. And we will just wait uh, just a There we go. So as we begin this afternoon's meeting, I'll just ask that we take a moment for silent reflection. Thank you. Under item two is declarations of pecuniary interest in the general nature thereof. Councillor Ritzma and Councillor Beatty. I'll take Councillor Ritzma's first, if you would. So under item 7.8, removal of holding provision uh, report at 95 Kelly's Lane, um, I declare uh, pecuniary interest as the owner of the lane and that documentation for with regards to that form is in the clerk's hand. Thank you. Councillor Beatty. Item 7.4, as I am a friend of an individual who has a vested interest in that project. Thank you. Yes. Uh, Councillor Ritzman, you, you don't have to state uh, the reason for, but I believe earlier in in-camera session, you declared an interest in that item? Yes, I did. Thank you very okay. much. And Councillor Beatty, you did as well? Yes, I did. Okay. Thank you very much. Item three is adoption of the minutes. They've been circulated from the July 13th, 2020 meeting, and they have been circulated. Is there anyone wishing to move them at this time? Councillor Vasilakos and Councillor Ritzma. Discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Opposed, if any? And that's carried. Thank you. Item four is adoption of the addendas to the agenda. And the addendas are addenda one and addenda two. Members of council have been emailed addenda two. Uh, and the addendas are uh, revised attachment two to item 7.11. And item 7.12 for the contract with regard, with regard to City Hall Annex and 82 Erie Street building interior fit out. Uh, the third addenda was draft bylaw 10.6 for the acceptance of the tender with regard to 82 Erie Street. And item 5.2 is 265 Dave, St. David Street reconsideration of motion and draft bylaw 10.7. Would someone be willing to uh, move adoption of those addendas? Councillor Bunting and Councillor Ingram, discussion. Seeing none, all those in favor? Opposed, if any? And that carries. Item five is a report of the Community of the Whole, or sorry, Committee of the Whole in camera session. And at the July 27th, 2020 session under Municipal Act 2001, as amended, matters concerning the following, following items were considered. Proposed or pending acquisition or disposal of land by the municipality or local board. Proposed or pending acquisition or disposal of land by the municipality or local board personal matters about an identifiable individual or individuals and advice that is subject to solicitor client privilege, including communication necessary for that purpose. And at in-camera session, direction was given on all those items and that is for information. Item 5.2 is attended, uh, has been added to the agenda. And what I will do is invite over Ms. Thompson. I will just uh, open the item is from the July 27th, 2020 in camera session under Municipal Act 2001 as amended a matter concerning the following was considered and it's 265 St. David Street zoning bylaw update. Ms. Thompson. Thank you, Mayor Matheson. So this item is before council today. Um, just to give a bit of background, as council will recall, at the June 22nd council meeting, uh, council was asked to adopt a bylaw with respect to a zone change application for 265 St. David Street. Included with that in the holding provision was a heritage designation uh, re requirement. This is before you again today, uh, just to seek some clarification with respect to that heritage designation. So council having received legal advice has, is being asked to reconsider um, just for the purposes of the heritage designation. So the, you will be asked to reconsider changing the word for the heritage designation in place 
and changing that to, um, and that the heritage designation process as set out under part four of the Ontario Heritage Act be completed with no further appeals. There is an urgency to this matter because today is the last day to appeal the current zone by, zoning bylaw that was adopted um, on June 22nd. Um, so this will be coming before you now for your consideration. The intent is not to change any of the zoning requirements um, with respect to that. It's only to see if you will consider changing the uh, heritage designation uh, condition that was attached to the holding provision. And I can uh, answer any questions once we get into the motion to reconsider if that is council's wish. At this time, I would need someone who was in favor of the original motion, uh, as well as a seconder who was in favor to make a motion to reconsider. Councillor Ingram and Councillor Basilakos moving and seconding that this item be reconsidered by council. And it's subject to our procedural bylaw, which is eight of the possible 11 votes uh, needing to be in favor of that. All those in favor, opposed if any, and that is carried unanimously. So the item is now on the floor for reconsideration. And Ms. Thompson, I'll let uh, you come back and she can walk us through the next phase. Thank you, Your Worship. So now that it's been uh, reconsidered, um, there is the opportunity to discuss and debate um, if Council so wishes. So there is a recommendation before you that the resolution requiring the heritage designation for 265 St. David Street to be in place be rescinded and replaced with the following words. And that the heritage designation process as set out under part four of the Ontario Heritage Act be completed with no further appeals. There are no other changes being proposed to the zoning bylaw uh, application. Uh, that was approved. It is just the heritage designation wording. Thank you, Ms. Thompson. Is there anyone wishing to move the first motion there? That is that the heritage designation in place decision and pass out passage of bylaw 84 2020 adopted at the June 22nd, 2020 regular council meeting for 265 St. David Street be reconsidered. Councillor Seven and a seconder for that. Councillor Ingram, discussion. Seeing none, all those in, oh, Councillor Henderson. I just wanted to clarify, it's really just to clean the language up, right? It's more of administration. Um. Yes, the, the, the current wording um, for the heritage designation to be in place um, is, is sort of fettering the, the whole designation process. So that heritage designation process must run. Um, the, wet, the wording that is being um, proposed to have that process uh, completed with no further appeals is more precise and does not fetter the decision making that you will have um, in the next, uh, when, when it comes forward. So it will not um, fetter uh, your ability to make that decision separately from this. Any other questions? If not, all those in favor? Opposed to any, and that's carried. The second motion is that a resolution requiring the heritage designation. Sorry. Okay, sorry. That Bylaw 84 2020 to amend zoning bylaw 201 2000 be amended uh, as amended, adopted on June 22nd, 2020, be repealed. Moved by Councillor Vasilakos and seconded by Councillor Clifford. All those in favor? Opposed, if any, and that's carried. Okay. So the new bylaw would then need to be read a first and second time. Mover for such as Councillor Bunting and second by Councillor Burback. Discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Opposed, if any, and that's carried. And then a third and final reading for the bylaws, Councillor Gaffney and Councillor Ritzma. Discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Opposed, if any, and that's carried. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Thompson. There are no hearings of deputations and or presentations 
uh, scheduled, but under orders of the day, item 7.1 is a resolution and it's to receive a presentation for the 2019 annual report of the Integrity Commissioner and that Robert Swayze, Integrity Commissioner, is in attendance and the motion is that he be heard. This time, Councillor Bunting, or sorry, Councillor Beatty and Councillor Clifford, discussion. Seeing none, all those in favor? Opposed to any, that's carried. Uh, Mr. Commissioner, I see you on our screen. I'll turn over the meeting to you at this time. If you could unmute, unmute yourself, please. Can you try unmuting again? There you go. Can you hear me now, everyone? Okay, um, thank you, Mr. Mayor, and good afternoon, members of council. I'm gonna give you a very brief overview of my report. And uh, I had uh, five complaints. Uh, four of them were about your, uh, obviously a controversial uh, project in your, in your community uh, about the biogas um, uh, project. And I, I dismissed all four of those. Um, obviously, I can't get involved in issues that are before council. I'm not elected, and uh, um, my role is to uh, enforce the code of conduct uh, as to uh, individual members of council. Plus, uh, plus, the other problem I have is I report to all of council, and uh, uh, obviously, uh, it's very difficult for me to deal with uh, um, complaints against every member of council. The, the fifth uh, complaint was uh, payment of compensation for your participation in the Hydra Award, which is, obvious, which is specifically exempted in the Conflict of Interest Act, and uh, um, that was a pretty easy one. Um, I've had seven requests for advice, uh, and I, I choose to keep them all confidential, except the one where there seemed to be an impression that uh, members of council shouldn't speak with each other. You should uh, come into your council area and sit down and not talk to each other. And I, I, I disagree with that. I think that uh, you all have to uh, um, participate and talk to each other about issues. The problem, the only problem that's, that's been identified from the municipal act is that you, you really can't uh, uh, try to line up a quorum of councilors to vote in some way and do that surreptitiously. Um, uh, so I, you know, I, I just wanted to make it clear that don't feel that you can't talk to other members of council. Just don't uh, um, try to have a secret meeting to uh, get all of council or rather a quorum of council to vote in a certain way. Um, uh, your code is, is in good shape. It uh, conforms with the Municipal Act and the, and the Conflict of Interest Act. Um, and finally, I guess I should comment uh, that uh, compared to other clients of mine, uh, your council has performed very well in terms of the, uh, um, um, the code of conduct and your behavior has been uh, uh, much better than some of my other clients who uh, uh, are much smaller in population and uh, so council should be uh, commended. And, and that's it, uh, Mr. Mayor. If, uh, if, if there are any questions, I'll be very pleased to answer them. Are there any questions for the commissioner? Seeing none at this time, I would take a motion to please receive the 2019 annual report from the Integrity Commissioner. Councillor Henderson moving, Councillor Burback seconding. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those, oh, Councillor Seven. Sorry, I did have a question regarding our, I was just wondering if we had an idea of expenses, if we, if we um, made it an assumption that was somewhat around sort of the, the mark for the, the cost of this because it was so new or if we were, if we put aside too much or too little or if we could get a sort of a gauge for that. I, I can uh, I look that up and uh, do a, a, a memo to all members of council if you wish. Yes, that would be great if you could provide that and the clerk would uh, circulate as well. Sure. Thank you. Absolutely. Is that okay, Councillor Seven? Thank you. Anything further? If not, all those in favor? 
opposed to any that's carried. Mr. Commissioner, thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I will withdraw. Thank you. Uh, item 7.2 is a resolution for alternative downtown locations for the bike corral installation. And the staff recommendation is that a bike corral be installed in the following locations, corner of Church Street and St. Andrew, beside you, and beside York Street parking lot. And that cement pads at a cost of $70 uh, square meter be installed and funded from the trails bike uh, master plan implementation budget. Councillor Ingram and Councillor Basilakos discussion. Seeing none, all those in favor? Opposed if any, and that's carried, thank you. Item 7.3 is a subdivision agreement for Coventry phase four. That the corporation of the city of Stratford transfer ownerships of blocks 97, 99, 100, and 101 Plan 44M-44 to Northwest Stratford 2016 developments as required by the subdivision agreement. That the corporation of the city of Stratford enter into a subdivision servicing agreement with Northwest Stratford 2016 Developments Inc. for the de development of the Coventry of Stratford phase four subdivision. A mover, Councillor Ingram and Councillor Ritzma moving in seconding discussion. Seeing none, all those in favor? Opposed, if any, and that's carried, thank you. 7.4 is a resolution with regard to Olone Avenue Trunk Sanitary Sewer Extension. There are options before council at this time. Option one is the uh, staff recommendation that the information in the report entitled Olone Trunk Sanitary Sewer Extension be received and filed, or option two, that the information in the report titled Alone Avenue Trunk Sanitary, Sanitary Sewer Extension be received, that city staff meet with interested developers, landowners to discuss front ending service agreements for the construction of servicing on Alone Ave to allow for additional plans to develop, and that tender T2020-24 asphalt resurfacing for Alone Avenue be canceled. So you have two options before you. Councillor Clifford. I will move option two, your worship. A seconder is Councillor Ingram. Discussion, Councillor Seven. Yeah, I just, I'm gonna speak against the motion. I don't think, um, I'm hesitant to take on any, any extra expenditures. Um, to me that isn't, uh, I mean, we have a, a pretty daunting budget year ahead, as everybody knows, and um, I just think now is not the time to be taking on um, more expenses, so I'm going to be voting against the motion. Any other member of council? Councillor Ritzma, please take yourself off mute. There you go. Thank you. Um, so a question to staff, and perhaps it's to Mr. Delovic. What what type of inventory do we have for uh, for development uh, land development uh, for homes or for housing in in Stratford currently without bringing this new piece on board? Yeah. So your worship, if you uh, if you look at uh, the plan that was developed and when you count up some of the lots um, uh, that are are active. At this time, the developments where we have proposals, draft plans, or servicing underway, you know, we're looking at uh, well over 1,800 lots. Uh, um, in, and this is just in the northwest sector. This is where, where most of our development is happening. But this is where, uh, as reported, where we're seeing the development activity, where we're seeing some servicing going in now, where draft plans have been approved, and where others have, have uh, are getting ready to submit some uh, their draft plans. So. Uh, as I said, when I do the count, it's well over 1,800 units that uh, that they're looking at. Councillor Ritzma, a follow-up question? Yes, thank you, Your Worship. Then, then again, and, and how many years would that, uh, with regards to the use of, you know, projection of, of building, how many years of inventory would that be? Would, it, would I be fair enough to say there'd be 10 to 15 years of inventory? Your Worship, yes, it, 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 it is trying to... Uh, crystal ball what will happen 
Uh, you know, you look at uh, you look at the low years and high years. The last couple of years have been a little bit lower. You know, even in the development charges bylaw, we were forecasting maybe 120 units a year. Uh, so when you look at that, you know, you're 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 10, 15, maybe even beyond in the way of development, and and that's just in this area of the city. Um, although we haven't had any inquiries, there's still lands um, in other parts of the city that. Uh, uh, could could go ahead with residential development, but the bulk of it is is in this uh, is this is in this sector of the city. Councillor Ritzmo, one more supplementary question. Yeah, if I could, thank you, Your Worship. Just then, with regards, just help me understand if this if this uh, project went ahead with regards to the uh, Olone Ave trunk sanitation sewer extension. What would that do to the the um, development charges and, and perhaps then how would that extend to the costs of homes and the affordability of homes moving forward? So your worship, uh, as noted in the report, we, I, as staff, we'd want to relook at our development charges study uh, because we're talking about taking on, uh, uh, if council were to go ahead with this, um, some new costing earlier. And so we would then have to uh, have our consultant that was involved in, in developing the first and, and developing our past development charges studies and the, uh, the background studies and then figuring out what would be the impact and what would that do to development charges going forward. Councillor Clifford, then Councillor Henderson and Ingram. Yeah, I was just going to ask our director. Um, obviously, we, we've talked about the, uh, on the west side of Alone. I, I've got two questions. If we if we don't put this um, sewer in now, am, am I correct? It wouldn't uh, we wouldn't be touching it for like eighteen to twenty five years from now. That, that's my first question. Like, is that correct? Your Worship, again, it goes back to how fast the development happens uh, in the uh, northwest sector that's going to the Quinlan pumping station as well as what's going into Vivian, um, and and so it could be 10, you know, 10, 15, maybe 20 years before, before we would go into that area and, and construct the alone trunk sewer. The idea is that uh, um, it is in the DC charges bylaw right now. And the idea was that we would be building up in a reserve to eventually build that to allow those lands um, uh, west of alone and some of the lands east of alone uh, to, to, to develop in the future. But the idea was is that um, uh, the other lands that went to Quinlan and some of the other development lands would, would uh, take place first. And my other question, um, obviously if you have uh, contacted the owners on the on the west side, is it, I just want to know if, if there is if there is legitimate interest in development on on the west side, like in like within five years or so, like have you talked to the developers and I, I'm, I'm asking if there is interest or not, if there is legitimate interest. To your worship, we, we've had conversations with one uh, developer um, and uh, that has shown a lot of interest in this. That's unfortunately they're at the very nor uh, northern extreme of Alone, right at the intersection of Alone and, and uh, Perth, uh, Perth Line 36. Um, you know, they've made it several inquiries over the last couple of years, just had a recent phone call with them, express, again, expressing some interest as they've reached out again. Um, and then off and on over the years, as noted, we've had from other, other developers, property owners, but this one has expressed probably the most interest uh, uh, that we've had from, from a developer in the area. Thank you, Councillor Henderson and Councillor Ingram. So if say we decided to go ahead with this option, um, I'm not, I'm trying to decide which is the best way right now because it seems a shame to waste a couple million dollars, you know, paving it and then in say four or five years, they're going to rip it all up and do the sewers. Um, you're saying possibly around 1800 homes. Will we have, do we have enough staff to be able to handle that? If say we decide to go ahead with option two and then four or five developers decide to come in and, and do the west side within say the next five years will we be able to handle that or will we have to hire or your worship uh there's a couple of things there i think with respect to the design uh, uh 
the size of this project, we would, we would hire an engineering consulting firm that specializes in the sanitary trunk because it is a deep sewer excavation. Uh, we think there'll be some micro tunneling, so we would get some outside expertise to handle, handle that. And if we, if we have increased uh, uh, housing construction as a result, uh, you know, we would look at it at that time if we were to say require more additional building inspectors to handle the work. Here. But again, we would deal with that as the work came in. Councillor Ingram and Councillor Vasilakos. So I have a, a couple of points. Um, I think, you know, if we're taking the last five year average in terms of the number of units sold, um, we've had a very, very low inventory of serviced residential lots. So um, our, our average might actually be on the low side. I think if we had had serviced lots available and ready for construction, I think we probably would have had a lot more activity. Um, so, so there's that point. And then, um, the other point I want to make is that a lot of these draft plans of subdivision can sit in a draft approved state for a number of years. They can also sit um, going through the process and it really depends on the developer or the applicant to advance that application. So while we're saying there's you know 1800 units in the process, some of those may not come to fruition for five to seven years um, and be ready to go. And so I, I, I agree with Councillor Henderson that it's a little bit of a waste to resurface a loan Ave all the way out to Perth Line 36 and then in a few years rip it up just to be able to put that servicing in. It's better to do both projects at the same time. Um, but I also think, you know, it, it can take three to seven to ten years to be able to go through this draft plan of subdivision process and get lots service lots available for construction. So I don't actually see a downfall in bringing these um, properties online if they are viable projects and the servicing is available. Councillor Vasilakos. I had a question about um, the idea that we're spending $2 million to resurface now and that, that we'll have to rip it all up again to do this, let's say, and, you know, it, it could be 10 years, it could be seven years, depending on our numbers. But would, would all that work be, all that work, it's not a $2 million loss. Like all of the work doesn't have to be ripped up and redone. There's some micro tunneling, there are some cuts, but it's not all work that's wasted on that $2 million, is it? To your worship, um, I, I, you know, I without you know seeing the details of the sanitary sewer, a lot of the work would be gone because you, because of the depth of the sewer, we would be getting into some open cut, and as a result, the whole the entire road would be gone. The project that we're looking at right now it really is is a um, is a milling operation, um, doing base repairs where we've had some writing it when you go out there. Um, a good a good portion of the cost is for uh, uh, is for the um, bike lanes as well as ditching. So when you get in, when you get into some of these deep sewers, uh, the entire road will, will be gone. So all that work would, would be gone. Okay. The question is how long will that work last? And, and when you look into uh, the type of road it is, the, the traffic it gets, you know, it may have a 15 to 20 year life uh, with the work that we're proposing because it's not a total reconstruction. It, it really is a resurfacing project. So my follow-up would be because there's some really, I mean, that road is in really rough shape right now. And um, the active transportation pieces to that road are, are really quite useful um, in getting a collected, um, uh, getting a connected network of, of active transportation. How long would this other project take? Like, how long of a delay would it be in, in getting that road, which is really in rough shape, getting, getting that road redone and everything redone? What timeline are we looking for for redoing this, this uh, line? Your Worship, uh, it, it all depends on how quickly um, Council wants to move on the sanitary extension. If it's something that it's a project they want to proceed, it becomes an issue of, um, again, you know, funding, looking at meeting with the players, because, you know, I, I, some have suggested they're willing to do some upfront, uh, maybe uh, servicing agreements with us, so we'd have to go through that. I would strongly recommend that we, we relook at our development charges bylaw. Uh, because of these these new costs, but again, there's some changes coming down that uh, uh, would require us to make some changes to our development charges. While anyhow, because of what the province is doing, um, 
and then you know with hiring and consult proceeding with the design I, if it all goes well maybe you start during some construction next year but it be, could be a couple of years before it's all said and done and and i'm being optimistic when i when i say a couple of years and and so again sorry if i could have just one more and and that road right now how bad is it like have we got two years of that road left there are parts of it that are quite bad your worship it, it uh when you look at our our categories it's in the now category that's why we selected it uh, as you can see out there there's some uh, significant uh, rutting that's taking place in some of the uh, in, in sections of the laneways there um, and and that's why we've we've uh, pushed this project forward just because of the condition of the road and uh, it, it is in the now category thank you councillor seven and then councillor bunting Thank you. I just wanted to, I guess, expand on uh, some of my comments. Uh, it's it's my feeling, I guess, that uh, we're going. What we're going through is is pretty unprecedented, and I think we should be sort of pivoting and buckling down, um, and expect that our financial situation will could be very well much worse before it gets any better. Um, I think. I think. I was trying to think of a house scenario, so bear with me if it's a little. Uh, I, d I just think if you have a tub, if, you're, if your company is downsizing that you're working for and you're not sure about uh, the financial future, which, which we don't know uh, what's coming, if you need to replace your bathtub, you, don't, uh, you, you shouldn't be replacing doing a full bathroom renovation because you think that you might want to 10 years down the road. So um, I just don't feel like it makes good sense at this time. I think, I think maybe uh, to save the expense of redoing the road, um, and doing it all at once maybe would have been a good idea if we weren't going through uh, what we're going through as a, as, as a world really but I just think we need to we need to really recognize that that it is happening and things are, are changing quite drastically so thank you Councillor Bunting yes thank you uh, your worship uh, further to uh, Councillor Ingram's comments about developers sitting on lots and uh, not proceeding on building homes for a number of years. Uh, would one of the reasons be uh, something to do with the lack of demand of, of, of housing in certain areas or over demand as it were? So uh, maybe uh, Mr. Lovey could, could answer that. Why, why would a developer sit on a lot for a number of years? Uh, through your worship that that's a difficult one to, to answer i mean it, it depends on what the other the developers other holdings are they may have other property in other municipalities where uh, they feel that their efforts are better invested maybe because of uh, the amount of development activity that's going on there uh, you know they look they, all of them will look at the market and uh, they will bring to market uh, lots they feel that they can sell uh, typically that's what i see you know, most of the time developers don't like to hold on to land for too long that the, you know, the money's made where they, they can uh, um, get the land serviced and get the lot sold. But it, it, as I said, it's very difficult for me to speculate what, uh, what drives a particular developer and, and why they do or they don't move their projects forwards. There could be a vast number of business reasons. Thank you. Councillor, Councillor Ritzma. And just to follow up uh, the question by Councillor Clifford with regards to interest of landowners uh, with regards to development, and I, I believe uh, the director indicated that that the most of the interest came from the north end of Alone. Um, just a question uh, to our director Golovic: Is there another way of of uh, providing a service for those that developer at that end of Alone without? Uh, the full construction of uh, Alone Ave uh, trunk sewer sanitation. Um, through your worship, I mean the, the long-term plan is is to have that uh, is to have that uh, Alone trunk uh, constructed. As a matter of fact, even the Quinlan Road pumping station is temporarily going to the Vivian Street pumping station. That, that long-term is to go down uh, Alone as well. So this whole area is to is to go down. Uh, this future trunk sewer. So that, that's the challenge. I think if we look at uh, the existing lands that we have within the alone uh, uh, pumping station, 
um, you know, they'll, they'll use up the capacity that's there. There may be some opportunity to do a little bit of expansion to the alone pumping station, but the next issue becomes is the, the Vivian Street pumping station where this goes to, and as well as the infrastructure downstream of that. Um, you know, uh, there'd be a lot, there'd be a lot of work that have to be done to, to determine, you know, what the impact is and what does that, you know, do to, from a timing perspective. You know, there, there's been a lot of interest from <clears throat> some other developers saying that, you know, they could, excuse me, construct a pumping station for their property, <coughs> excuse me, take it over to a loan pumping station. But uh, again, that takes up capacity that's there. And then in the long term, all these properties would have to go to the alone trunk sewer. So you're building some infrastructure that in the future would end up being uh, decommissioned. Councillor Clifford. Yeah, I was going to ask the director, if there was an interest up here towards Gold Street, what, what would happen then? Is there any, other, if like uh, Kelly's land or the, up this, if there was an interest here, if we don't have it in, is there any other like hookup like for like up here or is it all on the, all on the alone sewage line? So your worship, you know, the plan is to also go through, go to uh, alone, you gotta, you know, to recognize too, it's the downstream and where all the sewers go to. So, um, you know, we have different drainage areas within the city. So they're all using different paths to get down to the uh, water pollution control plant. So this area of the city uh, was designed to go down alone uh, and then from there to the water pollution control plant. So this line uh, um, is a trunk line that, that was, you know, constructed at the beginning to go up alone with a long-term intention of that the west end, northwest sector of uh, the community uh, would be serviced uh, from that line. Thank you. Councillor Burbeck. Thank you. Uh, just a comment on um, the uh, demand of housing. So uh, I've had a few people tell me anecdotally that um, the prices for houses here have actually gone up quite a bit since COVID-19 has hit. Um, and I know of two instances of young families who have decided to move back to Stratford um, because their workplace has restructured and they can work from home. So although we're being hit in different ways, we might be surprised at the, the fact that the demand might actually go up for living in places like Stratford, which are seen as more affordable than living in the GTA. So I think that needs to be taken into consideration as well. Thank you. All right, it's been moved by Councillor Clifford and seconded by Councillor Ingram that option two, that the information in the report entitled Alone Avenue Trunk Sanitary Sewer Extension be received, that city staff meet with interested developer landowners to discuss front ending service agreements for the construction of servicing on Alone Avenue to allow for additional lands to develop, and that tender 2020-24 asphalt resurfacing 2020 Alone Avenue be canceled. All those in favor? Opposed, if any. And I'll vote with those. So can I see the hands for those opposed or in favor again, please? Let's start with in favor. We have six in favor, opposed. Now vote with the three that are opposed. So the motion will carry six to four. All right, thank you. Uh, that makes item 7.5 redundant. So we'll then move to item 7.6, which is, which is a resolution with regards to Stratford Air Services opening your, by appointment. Your, your Worship. Yes. Uh, point of order. Uh, yes. You, you said uh, the final tally was uh, six and four. Yes. There are 11 people voting. Councillor Beatty declared an interest. Oh, I'm sorry, you're right, Your Worship. Forgive me. No problem. I do that all the time. Uh, item 7-6 is the Stratford Air Service opening by appointment. And the staff recommendation is that Council approve Stratford Air Services to reopen by appointment only following all city COVID-19 safety precautions and to continue and monitor here in Perth Public Health. Councillor Ritzman, Councillor Vasilakos moving in seconding. Discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Opposed, if any, that's carried. Item 7-7 is an update to the city's extreme heat policy. 
Councillor B uh, Bunting, you're uh, moving that. I saw your hand. Thank you, Councillor Burback. You'll second it. Thank you. Discussion. Seeing none. All those in favor. Opposed, if any. Thank you. It's carried. Item seven eight, and I know Councillor Ritzman has declared an interest in this, is the removal of holding provision for uh, ninety five Kelly's Lane, and that the zoning bylaw number two hundred one two thousand be amended by removing the holding provision from 95 Kelly's Lane located off of Romeo Street North on the north side of Kelly's Lane, legally described as part lot 45, concession two of Northeast Hope, part one of 44R-5695 and uh, TWR-372561 in the city of Stratford for the following reasons. The conditions outlined in the holding provision when the H can be removed have been satisfied. Removal of the holding provision will allow for development of the single detached dwelling in conformity with the City of Stratford official plan and zoning bylaw and removal of the holding provision is consistent with the provincial policy statement. Mover for that motion, Councillor Ingram, seconded by Councillor Clifford. Discussion? Seeing none, all those in favour? Opposed, if any, and that's carried. Thank you. Item 7-9 is a resolution with regards to the 2019 annual report for the housing and homelessness plan for Stratford, Perth County and St. Mary's. And it is of the 10 year plan from 2014 to 2024. And that the staff recommendation is that the report uh, be endorsed by council. Councillor Vazalakos and Councillor Henderson moving in second. Discussion. Councillor Henderson. I would like to encourage people to actually read the report. It's a very thorough report and shows all the actions that have happened. And I think for a city of our size, we do an amazing job. Thank you to the staff. Thank you, Councilor Anderson. Is there anything further? If not, all those in favor of the motion? Opposed, if any? And that's carried. Item 710 is a resolution of weekend road closures on Lakeside Drive and staff recommendation that the information provided in the report titled Review of Weekend Closures on Lakeside Drive be received for the consideration of council. So first we'll receive the report, if we could do that. Councillor Beatty and Councillor Vazalakos. Discussion? All those in favor? Opposed if any? That's carried. Is there anyone wishing to act on that report at this time? All right. Councillor Bunting. Yes, I would like to speak uh, on behalf of uh, maintaining the road closures on weekends for a period of time, certainly uh, up to and including the end of August. <clears throat> I also maybe even look to go to um, further than that to the Labor Day weekend uh, with the um, summer music barge uh, and a lot of activities and it seems to me that more and more people are coming to Stratford for day visits or and some, in some cases overnights. Uh, I, I think it's important that we have an area that we can have down by our park that is uh, big enough to host a, a number of people socially distanced. Uh, also if we introduce the vehicles back to Lakeside Drive, uh, they, there's a good possibility that the barge music could get lost with that traffic noise and so on and so forth. I think this is the wrong time. Up until now, yes, I agree that the, the, the usage of the closed road has been uh, less than we thought, but however, this is the wrong time to be uh, reopening the road with the uh, barge music going on for the next five weekends. And uh, I will be uh, making a motion that we uh, go with uh, keeping the road closures to at least the end of August and possibly even looking at uh, the, po the potential for the Labor Day weekend, which I think is September 7th. I know I should really pick one or the other. So I, I'm going to ask you to take one or the other. Yeah. So your motion would be to keep the road closed until uh, after Labor, or until and including Labor Day weekend. 
Yes, sir. Thank you. A seconder for that. Councillor Ritzma, discussion. Councillor Clifford Henderson Ingram. Yeah, I support the motion on the floor. I, I, we, we've had it open and I, I think the success will grow. The only thing I would ask again, and I've had complaints about cars on it and motorcycles on it. So if there's any, if I, and I know we're trying to keep them off, but I think if we're going to have it closed, we have to somehow keep the cars and other motorized vehicles off the road. Thank you. I, and I would agree. Councillor Henderson. Well, I was just wondering why we needed a motion when we've already made a motion that the original motion was we were going to be doing this till the end of August and we look at it. And then I had made a motion that we asked staff to come back to report for July. So why do we even need a motion? We just received the report and move on. Because he's including uh, the Labor Day weekend, which wasn't covered in the other motion. Councillor Ingram. Thank you. So I, I have to admit that um, I, I've been a little torn over this item because as uh, Councillor Bunting recognized, the usage has not been as uh, um, plentiful as we <laughs> expected it to be. Um, I, I, I th the other side of that is that we did allow this to be a pilot project um, so that we could take a look at how it operates how it functioned, how well it was used um, for the future. And in order to gauge how successful that pilot project is, you have to allow it to continue all the way through to the end of what we said the pilot project was going to be. Um, the, the one caution I, I also have is the, um, the warning about keeping motor vehicles off the road um, and and away from the barricades. Um, I have also witnessed uh, families with young children on bikes that are taking up the entire span of the road between Queen Street and the bottom of Snake Hill, going opposite directions, going in all lanes of traffic. Um, so there's that, that small section that we were wanting to keep open for parking um, that cyclists are not paying attention to, um, and not realizing that it is still open to um, vehicular traffic. And I've witnessed it on more than one occasion. Um, some of the little people on bikes also had training wheels, so they're, they're quite tiny. Um, so, so I think it's going both ways where, you know, it's, it's not just motor vehicles, it's also cyclists that are using the open section of the road and motor vehicles that are using the closed section of the road. And it's creating um, what I'm a little concerned might become a safety issue in, in the future or is a safety issue now. So I have to admit I'm a little torn because as we said, the usage has not been uh, what we expected. And um, I, I do understand where Stratford Summer Music is coming from with respect to having vehicles and how that might impact the sound of the music coming from um, their programming. Uh, okay, I have Councillor Ritzma, I see Councillor Seven, Vasilakos Henderson. So just to uh, continue on from Councillor Ingram's uh, comment, originally I wasn't a, a, a huge proponent, especially when we thought about taking it all the way to, to Snake Hill, but certainly allowing from Queen Street on um, for parking. Uh, I was down on Saturday night with my wife for a bike ride and I was thoroughly um, surprised and, and happy with the use both by cyclists, uh, both by walkers. Uh, at one stage, five people across the road walking, uh, a young family out with their bikes. So certainly I, I think as, uh, as was shared by other councillors, I think it's going to be something that's going to grow a wee bit. Uh, I wasn't totally in favor, but certainly am an advocate for it now. So um, I certainly will speak, uh, vote in favor of the, the motion. Thank you. Councillor Seven. Yeah, thank you. I, I just had a few points. Um, I guess I, what I'm hearing is uh, a little concerning that we, we have a sort of a pilot project here that we put in place um, and we have many admissions that it isn't as effective as we hope, but, but a sense that doubling down will, will sort of make it, uh, will change that. And, and, and I guess the other thing is uh, much of the argument to have 
to have Lakeside Drive closed and to have more space and to um, to just to have it closed so people can have more room and the amount of people. I mean, you could also translate that into downtown and, and by any stretch, if we think that Lakeside should be closed, we should be closing all the streets downtown because going downtown is impossible. It's literally impossible to socially distance. Uh, for one, you can't get by pedestrians on the sidewalk and you can't walk down the, uh, the boardwalks without being six feet uh, near somebody. So, and the other thing is just, I just want to hammer home the point that has caused me the most reason for opposing this since the inception. And that is, if we, we would never propose anything as a council, I don't think that would knowingly exclude people from um, you know, enjoying things. And, and I, think, I think closing it for summer music is, is, the, is sort of the opposite of what we should be doing. We should be opening it so that everybody, everybody can enjoy the summer music and drive by. And, and all the years that summer music has been having the barge music and we've had tourists and more traffic, we've had vehicles and it has never been uh, an issue that's come to council. Um, and there's often a sense that the city does things more for tourists than, than for locals. And I feel like the admission that we're doing this because we're hopeful and that more tourists are coming into town is, but we're closing it off for people who like to go for, for a drive down by the river on the weekend who more likely live here than don't is uh, it, it certainly doesn't help that. And then I just, for, for those reasons, I, I can't support the motion and I would like to see Lakeside opened as soon as possible. Thank you. Councillor Vazalakos. Um, I'm just gonna, so what I've noticed is that the usage of that open section um, has been increasing sort of in step with how we're opening up um, in terms of going from you know stage one to stage two to stage three. And so this past weekend, you know, I have noticed increased use over the last few weeks. This past weekend was used quite, it was quite obvious there were a lot more people down there. I would argue that there are some visitors, but there are also some, a lot of locals that are using it. I noticed some farm families that brought their kids with their little bikes so they could learn to ride as well. Like there's, there seems to be a mix of everyone. And if you go back to the original thought of this, we opened it early on in stage one and stage two so we could work out some of the logistics we could see how it worked we could peg any problems like you know some of the traffic issues that we're seeing so that when we did get to the point of stage three where we might be seeing more visitors we would be able to then use that space well and i would think and one of the things i think summer music has done a very good job of saying how can we have barge music move it along and have more people able to enjoy it and the road closure has worked for that so I would, I am in support of extending it past um, the, the long weekend only because what I've observed is an increased usage, increased visitors, and it's starting, and, and each week it works a little bit better, and, and I think we're getting it right. I will say there, there is a little bit, of, um, Councillor Ingram was right, there is a little bit of conflict with bikes and cars, but the cars are driving a lot slower along that stretch. So I will say that it, that stretch from Snake Hill over to the road closure does seem to be working more like a parking lot than a road, which I appreciate because when the whole stretch was open, there, there were, I would say, higher speeds along that stretch. So I'm in support of extending it just from my being down there every day and observations. Thank you. Councillor Henderson. I'm really torn on this. Um, I, I have concerns because I have seen people coming past where the uh, Queen Street and they're heading east and they're continuing to walk on the road and they're continuing to ride their bikes all over. And I, I don't know what the stats are or how this has worked in other communities, but I just worry that what we're teaching our young children is that in a certain section of the city, you can ride your bike all over the road because it's closed. And I worry about the safety of them and ensuring that they're lear learning the rules of the road. And like, even if they're, the road's closed, I wish the bicycles will stay on their side of the road that they should be on as if it's closed, but yet it's safe for them to ride, you know, like so that 
I guess I just worry about the children, you know, getting the wrong message. I've seen adults come out too, but I'm, I'm, I'm worried about them too, but I'm more worried about the children. And the part about the summer music, I really didn't understand that because like we've never closed the road down for summer music before. And I realized this is different circumstances and uh, you know, they're not staying stationary in one spot. So cars going by would have always been an issue when they were sitting where they were. So I haven't decided yet how I'm going to vote on this. I'm, I, uh, I, I hear from people that are upset because they can't drive along the river. I've gotten quite used to just coming down Queen Street or coming down Snake Hill and just doing that section. So I still can get my taste of the river and I'm still there and the parking area is still there and available. My only really concern right now is the kids on the bicycles. So that's just my comments. Back. Thank you. Yeah, I would like to um, say that I agree with Councillor Vasilakos. I've seen a, a slow increase in the amount of use. Um, just a comment about the summer music. Uh, when I was talking to Ms. Matheson, uh, she was saying that they were trying to find ways that they could do a socially distanced performance. And with the various restrictions and the different stages that we went through, um, really having a moving barge was the, really the only solution um, because it would be illegal to have the barge parked where it used to be last year and have people congregate. So that's what they were trying to avoid. And when they heard that the road was going to be closed down, they thought this would be a perfect match um, for the program that they were, they had prepared. So it is a little bit like pulling the rug out from under them if we decide to close it out. So, um, but I would agree that, um, we need we do need to find a way to keep cars uh, out of that area um and i'm actually not as concerned with children riding their bikes on the road i mean i i do having just raised kids that rode their bikes to school every day um we have bylaws in the city that tell cyclists they have to ride on the road so kids do have to learn and, and, you know, they will figure out and the parents are responsible to teach them uh, where they would be when they have to share the road with cars and where they would be when they, when the roads are, are, are closed to cars. So I, I, I personally, I guess I have faith in the uh, parenting abilities of our citizens and that they would be able to um, navigate that safely. And it does, it does seem like the people that are parking along the, the base of the, the hill there uh, are being very cautious, which is great. Um, they do understand that there are, there's a lot of uh, bike and pedestrian traffic around and people coming out of, the moment you step out of your car, you're pedestrian. So those people who park there, who decide to get out to enjoy the park um, are, are having to navigate that as well. So um, I think it's working well. And um, yeah, I look forward to it continuing. Bunting. Just a, a closing comment from myself. I, I drive the River Drive on a regular basis, obviously not on, on weekends. However, uh, the only obstacle I've ever come across is uh, families of Canada geese waddling their way merrily from one side to the other, causing that to hold up. I've never had to stop for a pedestrian. I've never had to stop once for a cyclist. And I realize there's always concerns. Most, most motorists go slowly along that stretch of the road. So the Canada geese is the big problem. Thank you. Let's not cloud this issue with that issue. Um, if we could, it's been moved by Councillor uh, Bunting and seconded by Councillor Burback, I believe, correct me, sorry, Councillor Ritzma, that the Lakeside Drive between Queen Street and Waterloo Street remain closed up to and including Labor Day weekend. Councillor Seven. Can I request a recorded vote, please? Sure. I will have the clerk come over and take the vote from this podium. So when Mr. Foe is ready, we will call the question. Through you, Mayor Matson. 
Uh, when I call your name, please state whether you are in support or opposed to the motion. Councillor Seven. Opposed. Councillor Bunting. Support. Councillor Vasilakos. Support. Councillor Ingram. Support. Councillor Burback. Support. Mayor Matson. Support. Councillor Henderson. Support. Councillor Beatty. Support. Councillor Ritzma. Support. Councillor Clifford. Support. Councillor Gaffney. Support. The motion will carry in a vote of 10 to in favor, one opposed. Thank you. We'll go on now to item 7.11. It's a resolution for one-time provincial grant to improve service delivery and efficiency. And the staff recommendation is that the report of the chief administrative officer dated July 23, 2020, regarding the provincial grant to improve service delivery and efficiency be received and that the corporate leadership team recommendation of four identified proposals be adopted. One, the community equity action team consultant, $50,000. Two, the review of court security program, $50,000. Three, service delivery review outcomes, $150,000. And four, energy conservation report, 219,447. The total requested was 411. And a motion to approve that would be in order. Councillor Clifford and Councillor Burback, discussion. Seeing none, all those in favor? Opposed, if any? And that carries, thank you. Item 712 has been added. It's the contract for the City Hall Annex, 82 Erie Street Building Interior Fit Up. And the staff recommendation is that council approve an additional budget of 102,000 from the account R11 facil facilities capital repair or capital facilities reserves. And that council approve the award of the City Hall Annex, 82 Erie Street Building Interior Fit Up contract tender 2020-31 to Gateman Malloy Inc. for a total tender price of $694,950,000, including HST, that the mayor and city clerk be authorized or their respective delegates be authorized to sign the necessary contract agreement. Councillor Beatty and Councillor Vasilakos, discussion. Councillor Seven. I just wanted to comment that it I mean, I don't have an alternative, but it seems quite expensive for, uh, it just seems quite expensive, but I just, uh, and I understand the process, but I just wanted to comment, so thanks. Thank you. Anything further? If not all those in favor, opposed if any, and that's carried. Um, number eight is business or, uh, for which previous notice have been given, and we have none scheduled. And item nine is notice of intent, and there is none scheduled. Item 10 is reading of the bylaws. And there are seven uh, bylaws available to us at this time, sorry. There is bylaw 10.1, which is the transfer to Northwest Stratford uh, of blocks 97, 99, 100, and 101 plan 44M-4. There's bylaw 10.2, which is the subdivision agreement for phase four Coventry uh, Stratford subdivision. There's phase, or sorry, 10.3, which is the amend the zoning bylaw to remove the holding provision from 95 Kelly's Lane, which we'll take separately. So Councillor Ritzma can take part in that discussion. Uh, there is the removal of 10.4, which is the acceptance of a tender for 2020 asphalt for surfacing. And there's the added item of 10.5, which is the acceptance of the tender for 82 Erie Street at this time, and then the confirmatory bylaw will settle. So bylaws 10-1, 10-2, has been taken off, and 10-5. So 10-1, 10-2, and 10-5 could be taken collectively upon unanimous approval. Council Henderson will move and Council Ingram will second. Discussion? Councilor Seven? I'm sorry, could you repeat what 10.5 was? 10 10.5 is the tender for 82 Erie Street 
uh, renovations, and it can be taken collectively with bylaw 101, 102, and 105. Thank you. Thank you. All those in favor? So I'll declare that unanimous. So we'll go to first and second reading of bylaw 101, 102, and 105. Councillor Beattie and Councillor Clifford, discussion. Seeing none, all those in favor? Opposed, if any? And that's carried. And third and final reading, Councillor Gaffney and Councillor Burback for bylaws 101, 102, and 105. Discussion. Seeing none, all those in favor? Opposed, if any? And that's carried. Bylaw 10.3 is the uh, zoning bylaw to remove the holding provision from 95 Kelly's Lane, first and second reading. Councillor Henderson and Councillor Ingram. Discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Opposed, if any? That's carried. Third and final reading of bylaw 10.3. Councillor Bunting and Councillor Gaffney. Discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Opposed, if any? And that's carried. Thank you. Our next item is new business. Are there any items of new business today that members of council would like to bring forward? Pardon me, Ms. Defoe. Thank you. We've got past new business, so now we'll go back to the consent agenda. Anything on it? Um, Councillor Ingram. She had the biggest smirk when I missed it, so I had to let her go first. Thank you. Thank you for noticing. <laughs> um, I have a question about CA 2020-070. Uh, it's been noted that the building department is not in support of the application. And so um, if council has a concern regarding that, do we need to state that specifically right now? Uh, I think a motion would be in order if we wish to do that now. Be appropriate. So then I would, I would move that we have concerns regarding this this uh, liquor license application for 114 Erie Street. Thank you. A seconder, Councillor Vazalakos. Discussion. Not all those in favor? Opposed, if any? That's carried. Thank you. I believe Councillor Vazalakos, uh, you came second in the smart contest in my yeah. Same item, actually, and same, actually. Okay. After that, I don't have anybody else. I, I recognize any other. Councillor Burbeck, go ahead. I, I would like us to endorse the um, uh, COVID-19 funding uh, from the City of Oshawa, asking for upper levels of government to support municipalities as they support local cultural organizations. Um, I think that is a lot of merit, so I'd like us to endorse that if possible. Yes. And second is Councillor Beatty, or sorry, Bunting. And that is for uh, CA 2020-068. All those in favor? Opposed, if any? That's carried. Anything further on the consent agenda? All right, we've already covered new business. So item 13 is the confirmatory bylaw, which I believe now is 10.6, correct, Mr. Foe? It'll be known as bylaw 10.6, and it can be read a first and second time. Councillor Vasilakos and Councillor Henderson move. Discussion. Seeing none, all those in favor? Opposed, if any, and that carries. Third and final reading is Councillor Ingram and Councillor Ritzma. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor? Opposed, if any, and that's carried. And that concludes today's business, so motion to adjourn. Councillor Ingram and Councillor Burback. All those in favor? Opposed, if any, that's carried. Thank you very much, everyone.